splendor. But it is after school and a laugh of his family that the boy who has been immobile for so long feels the high-hearted joy of motion. My dad has a Kawasaki mule, which is a four-wheel vehicle. And that has excited all of us. Christy loves it, but even more, Danny loves it. It has a seat and it has seat belts. So Christy would drive, and then I would sit on the other side of the seat and have Danny in my lap belt it in. And we would go down through some woods. And he has never, I don't think, for anything shown the excitement that he showed riding on that mule down through the wooded area. He just loved it. And he watches the trees and everything. It, it was really neat to, to see that. There is a failing we have, an innocent blindness, that seems to descend on us when we encounter the handicap. We equate their physical appearance with their intellect and comprehension. We treat them as if they don't understand. We talk about them as if they weren't there. But they are there, listening, understanding, hurt. These are not acts of cruelty on our part, but the result is cruel all the same. It's difficult to be, as I said, in a world with adults that turn away from a child with a disability rather than be able to treat them more like another child. At first it bothered us. Um, people would just stare and uh, we had a hard time dealing with that. We didn't know how to deal with it, but we're getting better at it. When you see a child that has braces on, when you see a child that's not verbal, it doesn't mean that child's not bright. And it doesn't mean that child doesn't have a whole lot to offer. But all too often we make that judgment. And I really think that even I made that judgment before I had a child with special needs. But we have to, it's our responsibility to look at these special children and special people as complete. Jessica Liao opens her eyes to a new day. They are magical eyes, the eyes of an angel, reflecting hidden depths, windows to a world we can't know. They told me that she won't be able to walk, and she's not walking. She won't be able to sit down and she's not sitting yet by herself. And she's not doing any of that. But I think she's doing much more. Like, um, she wakes up at 6.30, and she always wakes up with a smile. Even if she's not talking and she's not walking at all, she's communicating through signs, uh, sounds, and through her eyes. I know her eyes. and. When she sees me, I know what she's trying to tell me. I think she understands a lot more than we think. She's so happy to go to school. As soon as she uh, sees the school bus, she's excited and she really loves school. Everything is great for her. She enjoys everything. In general, Children with HPE seem unusually happy, but because they are unable to speak, their feelings often come to the surface quickly and unexpectedly. What they are unable to express in words, they often express in tears of frustration. Jessica may look like an angel, but like any child her age, her behavior can sometimes become far from angelic. She's like mad and screaming. She likes to make me work. And if she goes to her brother's bedroom, she makes a mess because they have all the books on the bottom and she oh, oh, just takes the books and just throw them. And she loves to play with her brothers like when they start running or jumping or playing with the ball, she really has fun. She, you cannot believe how she laughs. She really enjoys it. Seth was given no more than 30 days, probably less. Take him home, the doctor said. 
love him and bond with him because he will be gone within a month. It is amazing what love can do. Today he is one year old and his parents are throwing a party. I remember um, just praying and asking God if I'm going to have Seth for a short time that I want to enjoy the time that I have with him. I, I don't want to just remember the bad times. You know, I wanted to remember him. Every day he was smiling and and he was like trapped inside this little body and something needed to be done. And they were wrong about a lot of stuff. About he wasn't going to make it. And uh, he was strong. He made it. I wouldn't take a million dollars for that. I wouldn't take a million dollars for having him here today. I feel lucky to have him. He has been such a joy to have. I mean, just to see him smile. And they told us he wouldn't smile, he wouldn't laugh, and he does all that. He smiles, he laughs, he coos. It is true that great strides forward have been made in the treatment of children with HPE. Enormous reason for hope. But it is also true that those motor functions that orchestrate the symphony of living are those functions most affected by HPE. Those children most severely affected will probably die quite young. For Seth, the struggle for breath, for life, became more than his body could bear. A few weeks after his first birthday, his small heart stopped. He slipped away to the mystery we all once knew and will know again. Seth taught me to um, cherish life. I see things differently, like um, I watch kids play and, you know, I, I don't take anything for granted anymore. It, it may sound funny, but um, when Seth passed away at the graveside, the funeral, it was a calm day, you know. The wind started blowing. So now when, when the wind blows, I think of Seth blowing me a kiss every day. Getting up every day and going to work and then thinking, I can't wait to get home so I can be with him. It was just, it was great. And I didn't think about, I didn't think about problems that he had. I thought him up of him as my son and I just loved him like a normal baby and put all that other problems that he had aside. You have to close your lips, okay? Close your lips. His name is Chance. Soon after his birth, he was diagnosed with HPE. Now he is four. At first it would seem that he is involved in play, but actually he is working at a far more serious task. With the help of therapists, he is struggling to possess two of the most profound aspects of human experience. Do you see a number three on your card? That's right. The Good ability to impact his environment with his hand and to communicate thoughts from his mind to the mind of another. And it is here that we see the indomitable spirit, the courage of these children. Chance knows what he wishes to do. Which one says he? But to get the message from his mind to his hand requires struggle of immense proportion. Okay, Chance, get that. What to us would be a simple act, for him is an exhausting test of will. Yeah! There are times when he falters, but little by little, he begins to release that little boy trapped inside. Looking, looking back on that, that was the most devastating aspect of the whole diagnosis was a total absence of hope and that's what we need and that's what every parent who receives such a diagnosis needs is a whole big heaping dose of hope uh, yeah uh, uh -huh. she got it in okay i'm gonna get another one Ooh. yeah i can't imagine any diagnosis that you could receive that there's not something you can do. Don't just take, tell me to go home and, and love that child and see what happens. What a hopeless, horrible feeling to, to not feel that you can help your child. What about his uh, sitting balance? And, uh... Christy and Hal Urschel did not let the hopeless, helpless feeling linger very long. They began gathering all the information about HPE that they could find. They were determined that something could be done. 
you know, at this point in time, chance has difficulty communicating. We're not verbal yet, and we're finding, we're searching to find the right way of having him communicate with all of us. Right now we're doing a combination of eye gaze, of augmentative communication. We're investigating and working with computer technology that he can um, do a visual gaze and it can be voice activated. But if you're not able to communicate, I think the greatest risk is being misunderstood and being misunderstood that he's not bright, that he's not smart. He is such a joy, he can, he can give you more love with his eyes than some people receive in a lifetime. That's the joy. He's the most special young man. Just because he can't do some things doesn't mean he's not as smart and we have to constantly stay up with him because he's very sharp. Chance and I play hide and go seek. We play chase. Uh, I'm not supposed to give him candy and I do. You know, I feed him treats. I do all kinds of things, but Chance does everything that we do. And talk about a joy. He's brought our family closer. The other grandchildren adore him, look after him, protect him. The search for the best therapies and treatments for Chance was a continuing voyage of discovery. There was nothing out there in the way of information or support. The Urschel and Carter families had the resources to gather what was needed for Chance. But what of families of lesser means? How would they turn the corner from the initial shock and fear of the diagnosis? How would they bring the best that science and medicine had to offer to the treatment of their child? Chance's parents and grandparents widened their focus from Chance to all children with HPE. Mm -hmm. you, oh, you all heard that? Rebecca says, I have holoprosencephaly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, Rebecca. Together they created the Carter Centers for Brain Research in holoprosencephaly and related malformations. At a meeting of parents, Dr. Urschel explained. Uh, the Carter Centers is a initiative that we decided to put together about three years ago when we were met with the same doom and gloom that a lot of the parents here had experienced in the medical community. And our goal was to go out and find hope. The main goal of this treatment initiative was to try and integrate all of the data and information in a way so that we could find a cure much more quickly than if we just used our local physician. We chose three clinical centers around the country and decided to make them the clinical centers of excellence for holoprosencephaly. One of the centers we chose was at Stanford University in California on the west coast. One of the centers was at Texas Scottish Rite Hospital in Dallas, Texas in the center of the country. And one of these was at Kennedy Krieger Institute at Johns Hopkins University on the east coast. We chose these three geographically dispersed locations so that it would make it easier for the families to get to them depending on where the patient was diagnosed. In addition to clinical centers, the Carter Centers include a network of research affiliates. These include Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey, Center for Molecular and Behavioral Neuroscience, Massachusetts General Hospital, Harvard, the Hospital for Sick Children in Toronto, the University of California at San Francisco, the National Institutes of Health. It is a critical mass of the highest science and deepest compassion. This is a unique collection of uh, scientists and clinicians and nurses and, and uh, students that are very anxious to try to come up with a wonderful way of both collecting new data about holoprosencephaly at a clinical level, at a basic science level, and also of translating that information to more effective therapies for this disorder. I think that an initiative like the Carter Centers can absolutely change the way that the medical world deals with holoprosencephaly. I think the parents will be better able to deal with the issues of raising a child with holoprosencephaly, and I think that the overall prognosis and treatment will do nothing but improve. And by linking families with kids with HPE, with physicians and with centers that are expert in caring for these kids, I think we can make those kids' lives better and I think we can help the families. A major initiative at the Carter Centers is the creation of an international HPE registry. The registry will be a list of patients diagnosed with HPE. From this list, an ongoing database can be developed. 
a wealth of statistical information that can be used by researchers and clinicians.